felt that hurt. Well, John Thompson said it was one of the greatest moments of his life, and this is a guy with a national championship in his own. Very good by Summers. Wallace with 22 seconds. There's the score in the Good point. Basket by Jonathan Wallace. Two possession game, but certainly the odds now. Time out. Certainly favor down. the Buckeyes. This is a 30-second timeout. So what does this man instruct his team to do? Well, they're going to set up a press right now. He's going to tell his team, let's go for the steal first. Aggressive play. We don't get to steal immediately. Let's foul right away. They're going to have to foul quick because they all, well, they're, they're at eight fouls, so they're going to foul and put Ohio State on the free throw line. Yeah, by the way, one of the little known, uh, little mentioned uh, items in this half has been that Ohio State's only committed five team fouls. Here we are with 21 seconds to play, and they still got a foul to give. They do, and if you think about it, it feels like Greg Oden's committed all five of those team fouls. John Havlicek, <laughs> Hondo, Jeremiah Rivers, as uh, he was known when he played for the Buckeyes. Great for the great Fred Taylor on a great Ohio State team. Conley to Lewis. Almost ran away from the foul. They got six seconds off that clock. We talked about that hug between John Thompson the second and third after the regional win. Look at this. There's not a parent out there, and especially those of us who are sons and fathers. Who don't know everything that was involved in that, that will bring you up short. Well, 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 John Thompson said after the game, he said, I spent a lot of money sending my kid to Princeton to learn some basketball under Pete Carrill. So John Thompson III has had two great coaching mentors in his life. That last foul was on Green. Lewis makes it 64-57. That's an eight-point lead again. Lewis has been... Money, seven of eight at the line tonight for the Bucks. Stack didn't get it. Wallace. Oh, oh man, how about three point Jonathan? Basket by Jonathan Wallace. Wallace. He has five three point baskets in this game. Timeout, Georgetown. Now, if you look at this all of the highly recruited timeout. players on the floor and in the Final Four, here's a young man from Tiny Harvest, Alabama, who steps up big for the Hoyas. Too little, too late, probably, as Patrick Ewing, who uh, played on those great teams in the early 80s for Georgetown and later with the New York Knickerbockers. With, uh, he can only watch his son's team. They are down by five. Patrick Ewing, Jr., and the Hoyas trail 65-60, 3.7 seconds to go. But what we're looking at, Brad, is likely a renaissance of Georgetown basketball. A, a program that was steeped in great tradition under John Thompson, and I think it's safe to say that it's likely to get back. And you know, Thompson, when he, the father, when he, when he coached the Hoyas, was so proud of taking, with so many rules and changed in college basketball since then, that he took a lot of kids who struggled in high school. Some people uh, didn't think they could make them eligible. John Thompson made them eligible, and he got them to class. Yes, he did. And he got them, he got them through school. But it took several years for him to get those Hoyas up and on what John Thompson III has done here. He's only been there three years. And he's got not only great athletes, terrific basketball players, but great student athletes as well. Jonathan Wallace wants to attend law school, and he's done. Ewing committing the foul with 2.8 seconds remaining. So Thad Mata, who is, by the way, only in his third year coaching the Buckeyes, looks like he's going to get a chance to play for a national championship. And this is part of a 22-game winning streak right now for Ohio State. So they say they're on a roll with the understate. The last time Ohio State lost was January 9th at Wisconsin. Seems like... Uh, was three months ago. <laughs> seems, like, <laughs> seems like three months ago. Daquan Cook with his first point of the night. But this man, you know, some coaches get to the Final Four, play for a national championship, as you see Patrick Ewing Jr. sit down. Some coaches get there, and you, can, you can't really say when they took the basketballs out of the bag in the fall that they really envisioned themselves playing in the championship game. That's did. Yes, I think he envisioned that one. 
Connolly and Odin signed with the Buckeyes. It's all over in the first national semifinal for only the second time in school history. The Ohio State Buckeyes will play for the national championship. They have defeated Georgetown. In what was a real packed game, Brad, and the big men, I think, acquitted themselves quite well. 67-60, the final score. Cheers all around for the, the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes, and we'll see more of Greg Oden on Monday night. And I think a lot of America wanted to see, and a lot of the world, those of you in South America, in Asia, in Europe, basketball fans, you, I think you'd like to watch a little more of this young man. No one knows exactly how much college basketball he's going to play. Everyone thinks they know. If they win one more game, I think the odds probably be increased. It'll be an upset if he's back, but uh, he, he, you know, he loves college. It just may not be feasible for him to stay because he's likely to be the number one pick in the next NBA draft. The Ohio State Buckeyes are playing for the national championship. They have beaten Georgetown by a score of 67 of our to 60. Game will be at 8:47.